Okay, so I had a question on how to set up a new printer in Prusa Slicer. Uh, and I thought what I'd do is walk you through one real quick here. Um, if you have uh, one of the printers that's uh, already included with uh, Prusa Slicer's configuration files, um, all you have to do is um, go pick the printer. So let's, for example, pick the under 5 uh, plus here, 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And I'm just going to add that and hit finish. So I now have the under five. I can pick my, you know, filament, whatever it is I want to use. Um, pick my printer profile. So what they've done is they've added a few default profiles. We'll just keep the super draft one here. Um, but what we need to do now is to modify this to support four colors. So all I'm going to do is make sure I'm on expert mode. So we can go simple, advanced, or expert. We definitely want expert here. We we'll go to printer settings. Uh, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to set the number of extruders to four. So just by scrolling that up, you can see it's added the four extruders. Now, if you've uh, done exactly the way I just did it, you will see that all four extruders are configured identically. And that's exactly what you want with this configuration. Some profiles, if you start with one, they might not be the defaults that Prusa has set up in the initial configuration. So you want to make sure that if you don't have uh, these settings the same, that you match them up, since you're always using the same extruder anyway. Um, just, it's just a good idea to go through and check that. But now that we've done that, the only thing that we need to do now is go back to our custom G code. And in the tool change G code, we just need to go to the 3D Chameleon uh, website, um, plug in our parameters for the distances. So let's just walk through that uh, and paste that code. So we'll just walk into that. So we'll go to our G code generator. Um, on the Ender 5, I typically put the button on the Y axis. Uh, we're going to place it in some location. So this is going to be, let's just say, a random value 350. That's 350 millimeters on the Y axis. Typically, what you want it to be is at the very maximum extent. Um, actually, let's look at the machine's configuration and see that it is, oh, it is 350, good. So that's just exactly where we want it. So it's at 350 millimeters, uh, which is the very last one millimeter of travel um, to engage the button, which is perfect. Uh, the extruder to hot end distance uh, in, in, in my particular case is 450 millimeters. Now what this is is your extruder um, has the drive gears in it. We want to basically put a piece of filament in the printer and measure the distance, push the filament all the way through into the nozzle, and then unload the filament and measure the where the gear teeth, the gear, you know, the drive gears on the extruder measure that distance to the tip. That distance is what you're going to put in here. Uh, we select our slicer. Uh, in this case, it's Prusa Slicer. And then we sit, simply hit Generate Code. Uh, that's now uh, generated all the G code we need. All we have to do is copy that. Control, I'll click in the box. I'll hit Control A to select all. Then I'll Control C to copy it. We'll go back to Prusa Slicer. We'll go back to our custom G code tool change and we'll hit paste control V and that's it so once I've done that you'll see what it's done is it's calculated that in initial position 347 which is three millimeters less than where the button is and then whenever we move the button or move to engage the button we always move both the X and the Y axis forward three millimeters we wait a second or whatever the timeout is and then we move back off of the button and then we wait for that action to occur. Um, so that's all of the button press is doing, is just simply moving three millimeters, hitting the button, and then moving back three millimeters. Um, so now, if you have a machine where this is the negative value, uh, for example, you need the distance to be, uh, let's say, for example, on some printers, you home, your, your limit switch for homing is at the opposite end. It's not at the zero point. It's at the 350 point. Well, if that's the case, what you'll do is you'll set this to three millimeters. I'm sorry, you'll set this to zero millimeters because that's where the button actually engages. And then you'll need to change this G code and reverse all of these button presses 
and then all of the back offs, basically you'll swap them. So you'll make the x minus 3 and y minus 3, and then you'll add 3 to get back to the initial position, and that will um, allow it to engage or disengage the buttons correctly. So just be aware of that. Uh, our G code generator is designed for having the the trigger switch placed at the opposite end uh, of the homing switch and the other assumption is that the homing switch is always at zero. So um, if you need help on that just feel free to give me a you know send me an email or whatever. I'll help you out on that. Okay so now that I've done that you can see that it's created uh, four extruders here and a little helpful tidbit here you can double click on the color actually I guess single click on the color there to pick a new color for those particular filaments. So we can uh, just do that for each one of them. And then uh, what I can do is simply load a model. So let's go to the desktop here and pick this fan cover. I have no idea. Oh, it's, a, oh, it's an Ender 3 fan cover. How about that? We'll, we'll print a few of those in one in each color. So now I have four of them, but they're all in the default red. So let's go ahead and change that. Double click over here to pick the color. One, two, three, and four. We can slice that and you can see that that's generated all four of them in a different color. So um, you definitely want to purge. So to go to print settings, I shouldn't say you definitely want to purge. If you're if you're just doing a single color change, um, maybe you're doing a sign and you're changing it different layers each color, um, you do not need to purge with those. Uh, but this one, since they're all on all four colors are on all the same layers, um, you need to actually have a purge. So to turn that on, I'm going to go to multiple extruders and I'm simply going to turn on the white tower. That's it. I can go back to platter. Uh, that didn't turn on. Why didn't it turn on? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen, that's why. So here's, it, it's placed the purge right in the middle of the block. We don't want that, so we're going to move that outside of there. Um, now, I'll tell you what I also do. Because we home on one end and we we uh, move to the opposite end, so you home here and your switch might be here, always place this back where the uh, the nozzle can actually be used to when you load and unload, you want the un loading and unloading in an area that's between or before. You want the purge block between uh, where you're loading and unloading and where your parts are. That way, if there's any um, um, drooling or dribbling of the you know melted filament out of the nozzle during the color change, that when it goes back, it wipes it across here. The other thing that I'll do is I will ensure that so that you get to all the directions by changing the width of the uh, the purge block here to make it uh, much wider so in this case it's only 60 let's make this you know 150 millimeters wide so six inches wide um, by doing that you can see it's much wider here and if the nozzle is here when it moves back across it's always going to um, place the uh, scraps of filament on this side of it and not interfere with your part so just a little helpful tip there and you can see when I've sliced that now the purge block is uh, in the front of the printer. This is the case of my Ender 5. Uh, it's in the front of the printer and whenever it changes color it's actually going to be right here and then when it moves back it'll, if there's any dribbles it'll, it'll first off it'll go into here do a little purge but if it doesn't purge it'll still always scrape across the front of this to remove that dribble before it gets to the part that it's printing. Uh, one other thing that I will do is uh, in this case you see I have the four parts here. Uh, if I'm printing these parts in particular, what I will do is I will arrange it so that these, it doesn't have to pass over uh, one of these. Otherwise, if, the, if another drool does happen, it doesn't, you know, drag the green across the white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these so that just so that they're out of the way, remember, it's always going to change the color in the middle, right? So it's always going to change here. So it's always got to go across here. It's always got to go across there. The idea is that now when I slice this, um, when the nozzle goes, it's going to go in a straight line to 
these parts. Now in this case it could hit the white, right? So I, I need to move the white a little bit further out of the way. That way and no matter what the extent is where it's at, it'll always miss the uh, the other parts, right? You could put them in a line like this and that would be even, even be better. Well, I'm trying to drag it. There we go. So now no matter where that purge happens, uh, it will always um, never drag the nozzle over the top of one of the other parts. So that's the ideal configuration of that. Anyway, that's just a little side note, but that's literally it. There's nothing else to do here. Um, you can now export this G-code right to your printer and start printing. Enjoy!